yep. take it away. Thank and you. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, Digi for having me. Uh, this has been a long-standing relationship. We've been with Digi for feels like longer than four years, uh, but apparently only four years. Uh, again, I work for Darden, Darden Restaurants. Everyone's uh, familiar with Darden? Yep, awesome. Lots of brands, lots of restaurants, mostly corporately owned. Uh, we have a burgeoning franchise business that is international, non-traditional, as well as uh, franchise. The great majority of it is franchise that we do on the international side. Uh, on the international side, we found that there was a need for a cloud solution for HACCP uh, process tracking, uh, something similar that, to what we did at the corporate side domestically. Domestically, we have 1,870 some odd restaurants, about 180,000 employees. Uh, we're the 40th largest employer in America, so we have lots of people on the ground literally checking all of our, our restaurants, all of our systems, our HACCP programs. Uh, you know, we have team members on the ground doing it live. On the international side, I, ha I do about 12 different countries, 70 different restaurants, and I have two operators covering that ground. If you can imagine, that's hard to keep up with. Um, and so we needed a solution that gave us greater reach within our territories around the world to ensure that we had the safest food system in the world. And we partnered with Digi to do so. And I'm not going to lie, we were building the plane as we flew it a little bit in the beginning. But things are much better now. And I think that there's an opportunity to actually improve uh, not only Digi's system and for everyone else, but ultimately our guests to ensure that globally we serve the safest food in the world. All righty. Dave, I have a quick question. Yeah. So when you started with us, were we, did you ever know us as Smart Sense, or has it always been Digi? No, no, no. There was like three names <laughs> or, or something like this. Um, it, was, it was actually, um, it was probably more closer to five years ago. Yeah. Um, we had a president that was running this part of business and he demanded that we have a system like Smart Tents, Smart Sense, Smart Tents, Digi, uh, help us monitor the food. It was unacceptable for us not to have eyes on the ground uh, all the time. And one or two visits a year was not enough. Um, so we went to the NRA and I rounded up about 14 different providers that were all relatively new to this kind of business. Um, and uh, Digi and Smart Sense and Start Smart Temps and whatever the name was uh, turned out to be the best partner for us, and primarily because they're willing to experiment, they're willing to partner and try things that may not always be successful, uh, and others weren't willing to do it. Uh, they wanted us to make the investment up front to try things out, and Digi didn't. I remember, I think when I first met Sammy. It was virtual, um, and, and I remember we talked about the whole system, the whole piece, the business, and I said, to me, this is like serious radio back in the old days of satellite radio. Remember in satellite radio, you'd put the satellite thing on top of your car, you put this thing on top of your dash, and eventually they just built it into the car, right? And I think we're getting there, and I think that's where the mindset is today in terms of being a platform and not just bunch of small sensors, right? Being more agnostic and trying to capture data from everywhere they can. I think it's a smart solution. That's a smart way to get at this because eventually all of our equipment manufacturers are going to start to put this equipment in it, right? We no longer need the, the rooftop radar, right? We've got to, all these sensors are going to be built in, whether it's Hobart, whether it's Rationale, whether it's whoever it is. They're going to start to incorporate this. What we need is a platform that's centralized, agnostic, and that can grab data from all this equipment, AC units, not just cooking equipment, everything, uh, and make sense of it for our operators, take out friction, uh, make sure that they can really pay attention to what's most important. And in my world, it's taking care of the guest, right? Uh, and then taking care of the team member and ultimately the shareholder benefits. All right, so on to what I had planned for everyone. Um, part of, part of making sure that we have something that works is keeping it simple, right? Um, because in, in my company, we always talk about back to the basics, right? Keep it simple. Don't complicate things. 
And restaurant food safety really relies on daily habits, daily operations. And if you make things more complicated, it is unlikely that they're going to adhere to this system, this piece of equipment, this tool. It has to be simple. It has to be easier than what they're doing today, right? Um, also, making sure that you know we're not fixing a problem that doesn't exist, right? So today we all have, well, we had systems that were all paper-based systems, and you store them for 30 days for the health inspector to come in. Those systems are very familiar to our team, so trying to implement something like this, I heard you know, earlier this, in the general session we talked about change management, have to make it easier for our teams to adopt. And making it digital away from paper is one of those things that will help us. We always listen to those closest to the action. Again, we're building that plane as we kind of flew it. And there was a lot of bumps in the road early on with this system. Um, but listening to those closest to the action allowed us to really iron out those bumps very quickly and create a system that they had buy-in, right? Because the last thing we, and we've heard this before, the last thing you want to do is implement a system and then your team come back to you and say, it's broken, doesn't work. Immediately, what they do is abandon it. And you create this kind of narrative that it becomes toxic eventually in your organization. So listening to those closest to the action ensured that we got buy-in. We took those activities, those ideas, we implemented those solutions, and then we gave credit back to the team and said, thanks to Team Boston for giving us these solutions. And that allowed us to get credit, right, and implement the system. And those that thought it was broken previously started to adopt it, right? On the international side of the business, we, we apply the US standard in terms of food safety, right? And, and only our standard is only if it's more rigorous than the US do we, do we change that system. We've not run into it quite yet, um, but when we do, we'll make those changes. Not a vendor or partner. We've talked about this a little bit early on. It took a few years. We ironed everything out. Um, it's really a collaborative relationship, and just like any other relationship, it's got to be open communications with mutual respect, right? Feedback is a gift, and we found out that um, it goes both ways, right? We share responsibility of ensuring that we've got adoption and implementation and accountability of the system, and, and SmartSense has uh, accountability to take that feedback from our teams and apply it in a system that's easy for us to do. So on the international side, uh, we speak a lot of different languages. Um, and we've had to implement both English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Um, and really important for us is that it followed the workflow of our team members. It didn't have people running in 10 different directions to complete a line check. So it followed our workflows. The hardware had to be rugged. Again, if you're sending sensors to the Philippines, uh, I don't want to have to wait six weeks for it to get there and get through customs. Uh, so the equipment had to hold up. And when it didn't, uh, we need to know that it failed and that Digi was on it sending more equipment to back it up. And they've, they've been incredibly good at that. And thank you for, for that. I appreciate that. Um, the digital retention of audits, we talked about that briefly. It's been really useful for us to take that friction out of our, our operator's hands, right? So no longer do they need an accordion file down in a drawer underneath here that they've got to go searching through to show that they've got 30 days of records on hand. We've got it digitally, right? So a health inspector comes up. It's very easy for us to provide that information. It's always accurate. Hopefully they've done their due diligence, uh, but it's always accurate. And Digital First really uh, empowers younger people, right? And the great majority of my team members are under the age of 25. Um, and so it's really important that the system is familiar for younger generations and they can navigate it. Um, and, and we're making strides for that. Digi's did a great job to update the, the platform and is really moving in the right direction. Really, I think, for me, this is, this is what we talked about at the very beginning. What's next? How do we get to the future, right? Uh, we want to be able to analyze uh, completion rates and have corrections, uh, corrective actions uh, already there, right? And, and it's not about um, a big stick, right? It's not about you did this wrong, I'm going to come hold you accountable for this. It's really about 
what you did right, right? I think, honestly, that's where the power is. When you've got 100% completion on line checks, when um, your food scores are soaring, it's calling up the operator directly in Sao Paulo and going, I need to talk to someone who's in charge of, I need to talk to Bob who's running restaurant XYZ and talk to them directly and, and praise them for that activity. Because that kind of relationship builds engagement, right? And that's what we need. We need the operators to be engaged with the system and want to participate. And a lot of that comes from the carrot, not the stick, and recognizing great performances. And so when someone in Sao Paulo gets a call from someone in Orlando from the home office talking to their franchise business, they're blown away that we would make an effort to do so. And guess what? You see these rates just start to pick up like crazy because people want to be recognized. And this system allows us to do that. But obviously, there's also an opportunity for coaching and accountability as well if they miss the mark. Um, we talk about uh, there's, there, there could be other ways to utilize this system beyond just general food safety, right? In our business, we talk about building and grounds inspections. And this could be something like ensuring that the doors are free of debris, that uh, there's no smudges, that there's exit signs that are, are easily uh, visible, that uh, the kitchen and general areas are clean. Uh, and we, we're trying to work out how do we get digital video into the system. We would love to have video as a part of the system so that I can talk to a GM in Manila and ask them to step outside their restaurant, walk me through the front door, let me see the host area, let me see the restrooms, let me see the dining area. That becomes a powerful tool for us as a corporate uh, entity to literally put our boots on the ground. Again, I have two operators. We're on course for about 12 to 15 restaurants growth. We're going to have about 85 by the end of the fiscal year. Um, and we've got two people watching this business. That's hard to do globally. Globally, right? Sometimes it takes 24 hours to fly to the Philippines if you've never been there. Plus, it's 12 hours ahead, right? So how am I going to do a buildings and grounds inspection on there on any regular basis without spending $10,000 in airfare and 36 hours to get there, right? Digi can help me. Right? They can help me get there on a regular basis, build engagement, do other things that are still related to safety, but not necessarily directly food safety. Right? But it's a platform that I can communicate and engage my teams on in a way that they need and want to be engaged beyond just food safety. Right? And the more engagement we can build with our teams, the more likely it is they'll stay on top of everything else that they need to do to keep sure that the food is safe. Wow, Abe, I didn't even think about that, but I mean, um, that's an amazing recommendation. It really is because, I mean, that would be ideal. You could actually be going through your different, be able to have video and then be able to go and observe some of those. Wow, that's, that's a really good yeah. suggestion. Yeah, and, and, and in our world, so again, 1,800 some odd restaurants, right? I have, I think there's 250 directors of multi-units domestically, right? They each handle anywhere from eight to 10 some odd restaurants each. But a system like this actually gives a large corporate entity like us greater reach. I may not need 250 directors of operation. Maybe I can get away with 220, yeah. right? And we talked about where, how does this system pay for itself? How does this lend value to the, the end user, the consumer, the corporation? Well, if I can effectively change your structure, your organization, and provide greater reach through technology, I get there, right? And better engagement, I get there, right? Um, that's maximizing resource allocation. And, and really, you know, I think it's, it's about thanks, you know, for a great partnership. We're really happy where the business is trending and what it's capable of. Uh, and it's been invaluable, certainly on the international side. Uh, there was, there's no way that we could do the type of business that we do globally without SmartSense. Are there any questions? I get nervous when I publicly speak. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> no? Where are you heading off this week? Uh, so I've got, I've got Panama coming up. I've got uh, uh, Saudi Arabia 
I've got Dubai, I've got Brazil, and I've got one more place that I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> and that's, that's usually before Thanksgiving. That's all before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, so my how Lord. do you standardize the processes with all the different franchises and different banner names that you have? So, so we have a really strong TQ department. So Darden is um, vertically siloed. We have uh, TQ, we have lawyers, we have everything. We don't outsource hardly anything except for this kind of stuff. Um, and so we had robust HACCP systems. We had all this in place already. It was in paper form. Um, on the international side, we actually piloted SmartSense for Darden. Uh, so we went into the franchise community and we mandated it. We said, you cannot do business with us unless you use this system. Um, and, and so they had no choice. And once we piloted on the international and the franchise side, um, that acted as a test ground for the corporate business. And all of our TQ directors and EVPs and all these guys got really, really excited that we implemented and we launched it internationally with franchise partners and it was working. Um, and that allowed us to then pilot test domestically with the corporate systems. And uh, now, I know it's all throughout Olive Garden. It's uh, throughout several other brands that we have. I don't know exactly the number of units and, and restaurants that we have online now, um, but it, it really, that part, of our part of the business helped launch it corporately. And so what we did was just mimic what we had in place from a paper standpoint, put it into the digital format. And again, it took some time for us to work out the kinks because originally it was like, check the bar, okay, go check production, okay, now check the line, okay, check the bar. And it's like, oh, we have to, we have to figure this out to make it easy because there's a lot of friction for our operators. Um, and that's a standing order in our business is remove friction, right? And allow our operators to take care of our guests, take care of our, our team members, uh, and ultimately the business. Uh, but if whatever we do from a support standpoint adds friction to our business, adds friction to our operators and their daily day-to-day uh, -day business, it never flies. Um, it gets squashed immediately. And so for us, it was really important to take those systems from a paper format, put it into a digital format, um, and we knew that this was the direction in which the business was going, that we had to be there anyway. So uh, it's just fortunate the right time, right place for me to be on the international side to pilot it to get into the, the enterprise. Yeah. I think we all know working with vendors, it could be a rocky start. Yeah. Uh, that new relationship putting something new out there to hundreds, possibly thousands of locations. Um, so what was your biggest accomplishment or the thing that you're most proud of that was rocky at first, but you overcame? You know, for, for me it was um, the fact that we, we were able to launch it into Olive Garden. Um, and prove out just the day-to-day -day systems. Again, going back to those line checks, going back to monitoring equipment, uh, and, and ensuring that the data or the information that it was putting out, that you know, we weren't being uh, a burden on our operators. Originally, there was a lot of alarm fatigue, right? So we, we got that figured out. Um, and there was a lot of pushback because it was different. Right? So just getting the operators to accept it and ensuring that we incorporated their feedback into that day-to-day -day function of the system um, was a huge accomplishment. Uh, you're, I mean, you're talking 890 some odd restaurants just on the Olive Garden corporate side and you're talking almost 100,000 team members that are, are employing this system. Um, and it was all because we took the time to listen to those closest to the action to ensure that we weren't adding friction to their daily business uh, and made things easier and simpler and allowed them to focus on what was important. So for, for me, seeing it launch under the enterprise at scale uh, was a win. And it was because we listened to those closest to the action. Yeah. Franchisees are typically driven by return on investment. I know you mandated this for them, but what was the messaging that you gave to them to say, hey, this is going to be a value to your business, and we, and the ROI is going to come out of that? Yeah, it was really about safety, right? We, we pride ourselves as an organization to be the, the safest restaurant you can eat at, right? We want to ensure that when you walk into our restaurants, 
we are the world's safest restaurants. And in order to extend that globally, that was, this is one of the ways that we could do it with confidence. Um, and so for our franchisees, it was really just ensuring that they rose up to what we believed our standard was uh, and that they met it um, and that we could validate it and hold them accountable to it. Um, you know, again, they, they didn't have any choice in the matter. Um, we, we said, you don't, this is not optional. And there wasn't an option to go with someone else because we wanted to centralize the data, right? We wanted one dashboard to look at all of our business across the world. Um, and so it was important to us to do that. Plus, we got a great deal. <laughs> Anyone else? No? All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks. 4.15, right? We have the next uh, section. Is it in here, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Our next one, he'll be removed.